If you haven't seen this video, I do suggest you go watch it. It's not required since basically I went ahead and followed along, made some key adjustments from what Algo Vibe here did. But you're more than welcome to. I highly recommend his channel. It's very good. So at the beginning, I'm just going to show you how you can connect to Binance with WebSocket and call the JSON to load and then put that into a Pandas data frame so that you can easily read the open, high, low, close uh, data from the WebSocket. Now, as I said before, Algo Vibes goes into this in a lot more detail than I do. So if you're just interested in seeing that code, you're, you're more than welcome to watch that video. I actually recommend that you do. Otherwise, I'm gonna go over the code that he wrote with some tweaks that I've made for my own purposes. Um, and then you'll wanna stick around because I'll show you how to do this with not Binance, with a different data provider that is not Binance. So the first thing we need to do is import JSON, import WebSockets, import Pandas. And then the way you connect to the socket is done differently for each data provider. But here we just call our coin, which in this case is Bitcoin to USD at K-line data one minute. And then this is the socket that we can connect to. We just attach our coin here. Um, if you want to do multiple coins, Algo Vibes shows you how you can do that. In my instance, I don't really care about anything else besides Bitcoin. So this works just fine. And then we create a message for when we connect to the WebSocket app, what we want to happen when we receive a message. So when we receive a message, we want to load it as JSON and then print that message. We want it to run forever. Now I want you to ignore this for now, but when I was first doing it, this is the basic way of loading the WebSocket data. Once you hit this, you will see lots of um, JSON code come through. So the next thing we need to do to build off this is build another function that just extracts the data that we're interested in. The, it's pretty simple the way that you do this is you just load, this is going to be our message. And then the data that we receive from that message is going to be broken down into nested dictionaries. So we just take our message, we go to the data part of the dictionary, we go to K, which I'm not quite sure what K stands for other than it's K line. And then you'll see the values, the value keys here. So open, high, low, close volume. Now we need to stick all of this into a dictionary. And we do that by just initiating a dictionary as such. This will make it a lot easier to convert into a data frame. And so we just set the data that we've just nested in, or that we've just extracted into our own dictionary create the data. In hindsight, looking at this, I think what we could have done is just called, is just grab the data and say, grab everything in data K, right? Um, but that would have been, I think, two dictionaries in one. I'm not sure. I should have played around with that. But in any case, this will work. We set the index as our event time. We rename it to timestamp. We make sure that all of the uh, values in there are afloat and we're not getting object type uh, data. We reset the index and then we print the data frame and we return the data frame. So we go back to that other function where we decide what to do when we receive a JSON and we just extract um, we just call the function we just made to extract the open, high, low, close. Um, and that will then, and then once we run again, this WebSocket run forever, you'll see each time new data comes in, it will print a new data frame to our uh, terminal here. And this is much more, 
the kind of data that we're interested in. And you can see here the timestamp, right? So 141, 143, 145. So each time this updates, uh, it will send this quote, we'll convert it into this format, and it'll come looking like this. Now, I came to work on this the next day, and I was receiving this error up here. And I was interested, like, why am I receiving an error all of a sudden? This was working perfectly fine the day before. If we read the message, it'll say service unavailable for restricted location. I've run into this before. I live in the US. So if we follow the link and we look for restricted, we can see a list of prohibited countries. I live in the United States, which is one of the prohibited countries from using Binance. This is unfortunate because when you connect to a Google Colab, you, ha you don't really have control from the location that server that you're using from Google is located. And it just so happened that when I was writing all of this, the server happened to be in one of those countries that is not prohibited. But when I came back to use it, I looked up the IP info and it was in Salt Lake City. So that's fine. Um, I just, I'm not able to connect to uh, Binance to continue to work on it. So I had to come up with another way of getting the same kind of data. And I actually kind of glad it turned out this way because one of the other data providers that we can look at is Alpaca. Um, I've heard of Alpaca for a long time and haven't really had a, I haven't really sat down to use it or to play around with it or build something with their API. So um, if you are in the US and you're running into this Binance issue, one of the other providers here is Alpaca. And let me show you how we do that. I am so congested, good grief. Binance is off the table. We're not able to use that reliably. So the next thing we're gonna try is using Alpaca. We're pretty much gonna apply the same methodology just to a different data provider. There's a few extra steps that we need to do, but we're still gonna import JSON, WebSocket, create connection, import WebSocket, pandas, and pprint. Next thing you'll need to do is go to Alpaca, set up a membership. It's free, but basically you just need to get your Alpaca API key and seeker key. Google Colab has this cool function where you can store your keys over here and call it using this method. Same as before, we're gonna set the socket as this and we can find this in the Alpaca documentation. Different from Binance, you it will, once you've created the connection, it will ask for an authen, authentication and that's where your API key comes in and your seeker key comes in and you'll send it with this kind of JSON message. Next, you need to subscribe to one of their data feeds. And in my case, we want to subscribe to um, the bars data for Bitcoin to USD. This cell, what it's doing is creating the connection. Once the connection is created, Alpaca will send us what's your authentication. We'll send the authentication message. It will send back what subscription do you want and then we'll send the subscription. It'll send back a code and you can read about what these codes are. Um, they just mean like whether something failed or whether something worked. I'll be honest, it took me some time fiddling about with this to get it to work, but eventually I did. And then I just created a, basically a while true, um, you know, format to load the data when we receive something and print it. Okay, great. So when I hit this, you'll see, so here's success. You're connected, success, you're authenticated. 
Here's the subscription bars. And it does take some time because unlike Binance, it's not just going to send you information every time something changes. So we might have to wait here for a while to see some data populate. And maybe I will just wait here for a while until we see something. There you go. So this is what the subscription looks like for bars. It tells you what the symbols are. Um, it tells you what happened. So this is a this is a buy. And then it gives you the close, high, low, and then the open, the timestamp, the volume is zero, and the weighted volume is zero. So again, we need a way to extract just the information that we want because I'm not really interested in this this symbol here. I'm not super interested in capital T here. So the way we can do that, let me just pause this, is using the same extract open high low close. I added volume weighted price here. Since they're offering it to us, we might as well grab it. Um, lowercase t is our event time. Again, we put it in a data frame. We put it in a, um, yeah, we put it in a data frame, we put it in a dictionary, then we put it into a data frame. Again, and we'll see this kind of. So now we're waiting for data. Nice, here we go. So you can see the timestamp, open, high, low, close volume, volume, weight, price. So this is another way of gathering some streaming data, albeit the alpaca data doesn't come in as frequently, um, but that's fine. I feel like that's actually more normal. Um, if you live in a place where you can connect to Binance, I think Binance is obviously the most popular way of going about getting crypto data, but Alpaca is a perfectly good resource as well. In the future videos, I'm going to show you how to actually use this streaming data and uh, actually build a strategy off of it and calculate some technical indicators as it streams, etc. And then hopefully we can even make a reinforcement learning agent that's able to uh, make decisions as things come up uh, or as new data comes in. That's typical, right? That's actually, that's actually move toward hooking up a model to one of these services so that it can actually make buy and sell orders for us. That concludes the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.